The film opens in the 60s at the height of the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union. After the Russians put a man in space, the United States was rushing to the moon. The Apollo 1 mission resulted in an explosion that killed three crew members. Cole Davis works for NASA as the director of the upcoming Apollo 11 launch. Meanwhile, Kelly Jones is a marketing specialist coming into a meeting while posing as a pregnant woman to convince the heads of a car company to sell Mustangs and market them towards women, in addition to the male demographic they are already trying to reach. Kelly works with her assistant Ruby Martin and demanding commercial director Lance Vespertine. Kelly goes to a bar where she is met by Mo Burkus, who claims to work for President Nixon. He told the car guys that Kelly isn't really pregnant, causing them to terminate their account with her company. Mo presents his offer to Kelly to work at NASA to help improve their public image before the launch. Kelly brings a reluctant Ruby to DC to start work. After settling into their rooms, Kelly goes to a diner where she ends up meeting Cole after he catches her book lighting on fire. He puts it out and engages in banter with Kelly. Before leaving, Cole tells her that she is the most beautiful woman he's ever seen. The ladies begin their jobs, with Kelly and Cole awkwardly reuniting when he realizes she is now in charge. Kelly and Ruby are shown their crappy offices. Cole and Deputy Launch Director Henry Smalls aren't thrilled when they see that Kelly hired an actor to play Smalls on a news broadcast. Cole confronts Kelly over this, but she reminds him that he told her that his team doesn't do interviews. When Cole and Smalls complain to Mo over Kelly's work, but he tells them that she is getting the results they want, so they have to deal with her. Kelly comes up with ads tying the moon landing with big companies like Tang and Fruit of the Loom, while Cole and his team continue prepping. Despite the extensive campaigns, the news seems more focused on the Vietnam War. Kelly and Cole later bond on the boardwalk but he rejects her idea to bring a camera on the launch to get a picture of the Earth from the moon. Kelly later talks to Smalls about how Cole used to be a pilot, but had to back out of the program because a doctor found something in his heart. He tells her that Cole is found gardening, and Kelly goes to see that he is paying tribute to the victims of the Apollo 1 launch. Later on, Cole and Smalls welcome Senator Hopp for a tour of the facility and for him to donate for the space program. But Hopp isn't entirely on board until Kelly comes in and charms him by pretending to have been inspired by him years earlier. The crew then sets their sights on yes votes from other elected officials. Kelly and Cole win over Senator Cook before meeting with Senator Hedges, who agrees on the condition that Cole gives an interview for some people Hedges owes a favor to. The crew later celebrates their votes while Cole shows Kelly the plane he used to fly. Kelly discusses with Cole how she used to go door to door across the country selling goods with her mother, which is how she developed her knack for conning people. Kelly goes back to her motel room to find Mo there with a new proposal. He presents her with Project Artemis, a plan to shoot a fake version of the moon landing as backup in case the Apollo mission goes sour. If they are discovered, it could mean jail time or execution for treason for Kelly and anybody else involved. She reluctantly agrees to it. Kelly recruits Ruby and Lance to help with the task. Lance quickly begins with his prima donna ways while Kelly tries hard to ensure nobody else at NASA finds out about this. Kelly later joins Cole as he does the requested interview with Chuck Meadows. While it starts off pleasant enough, Cole loses it on Chuck when he brings up the Apollo 1 tragedy, implicitly putting blame on him for supposedly not reading reports on the shuttle before it launched. Kelly later chastises Cole for this, but he defends himself by saying he would never say anything untruthful about those men. A day or two later, Cole invites Kelly to fly with him in his plane to Louisiana to speak to Senator Vanning and his wife Jolene for dinner. While Vanning is not initially on board with the space program, Cole appeals to his Christianity and convinces him to sign on. After their success, Cole and Kelly fly home where they share their first kiss. The crew celebrates their yes votes, though Kelly and Ruby start to feel visibly guilty over the secret they are keeping. Kelly later finds Mo at the office, where she tries to quit the project on him. 
Mo reminds her that if she were to ever spill the beans on Project Artemis, he would expose her. Moe also states that even if the Apollo launch goes off without a hitch, they still plan to broadcast the filmed version anyway. Kelly considers leaving until she looks through a sketchbook given to her by Ruby, featuring detailed drawings of the people they worked with, including a picture of Kelly with Cole. The astronauts touch down on the moon, while the fake ones do the same. On the fake set, a black cat that has been running around NASA runs onto the set while Mo is present. He sees that the cat is not present on the broadcast, cluing him in that Kelly and company are using the actual landing footage. When Cole realizes this, he excitedly cheers to himself. The crew celebrates their success, and Mo earnestly thanks Kelly for saving his ass. The astronauts later make their safe return back to Earth. Cole reunites and reconciles with Kelly, who says her real name is Winnie. He commends her for pulling everything off, and they resume their relationship with a kiss.